Okay, good afternoon, all of you. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, I'd like good to welcome. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome all the participants in the session three of day two. Uh, this uh, session is regarding public, private, and distributed ledgers. I'd like to introduce our expert speakers. Uh, the expert speaker, Dr. Sherin Jaffer, ma'am. I'd like to introduce Sherin Jaffer, Dr. Sherin Jaffer, ma'am. Sharon Jaffa, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Computer Science and Engineering, Jamia Hamdard, New Delhi. Jamia Hamdard, New Delhi. Dr. Sharon Jaffa, ma'am, is an Assistant Professor, Computer Science Engineering and the School of Engineering Science Technology, Jamia Hamdard, with a decade of the successful experience in the teaching and research management. She specialized in the wireless network, soft computing network security. Ma'am has great profile in the Scoopers, Mendeley's, Google Scholar, Research Gate, Paplon, with about a half century of the papers published in the Scoopers, SCI, peer-reviewed journal, double century of the paper reviewed, and also editorial board and editor-in-chief of the many reputed Scoopers Index journal. Ma'am has published patent and also is a co pi for PIST project of the DST. Ma'am has a strong believer in the power of positive thinking in the workplace. Ma'am has regularly uh, developed internship and career companion for the students through internship and e pouch groups and guided huge number of graduate, postgraduate, and also PhD students. Mem has been session chair for five international conferences, keynote speaker, resource person for 20 plus webinars, and FTP for renewing institutions, AICT, STTP, and for AICT at LFTP. Mem has a great experience in this area. I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Shirin Jaffer, Mem, to please share your precious knowledge so that we all participants can also uh, comfortable and get uh, the deep knowledge in the in this uh, new topic blockchain. Good I welcome everybody. Ma'am, I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please. So I'm just sharing my screen. Ma'am, is my screen all shareable? Oh. Yes, ma'am. It's just coming, ma'am. Is it all fine, ma'am, now? Uh, yes, yes, it is visible, ma'am. If it may be in the center, ma'am. If it may be in the center. Uh, ma'am, I have shared with uh, the full screen only. Is it fine, ma'am, now? Aki, ma'am? Yes, ma'am, it is fine, ma'am. It's uh, uh, it's clearly visible, ma'am. Okay. Uh, on the screen also, yes, ma'am, it is clearly there. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Myself, Dr. Shreen Zafar. Uh, do it now or sometimes later will become never. Uh, the starting, uh, the specification, I think, when I was listening to the uh, uh, videos and uh, uh, the uh, PPTs shared of the yesterday's uh, topic, so I slightly modified my topic. So now I'll be uh, obviously telling you about the types of blockchain, but I think we have done a lot regarding the types of blockchain. So I'll be now giving you more in depth of how blockchain, AI, and IoT can be a perfect fit. Because nowadays we are specifying that we are doing a lot of work in artificial intelligence, we are doing a lot of work in IoT and how blockchain can be utilized to become a perfect fit for this particular scenario. And I would I would like to inform everybody that in this current pandemic situation, we all as technical people do need to do something in a particular manner for the society also, because we uh, need to specify that this is a situation which is very dynamic and in any 
reform we need to help the society and help this particular scenario firstly i would like to thank purnima institute and uh, all the organizers who, who are doing a lot of hard work for the successful fdp and for this successful um presentations to be delivered to all the particular participants let's start with uh, the scenario uh, looking at this particular video which will tell you that how blockchain is blockchain playing an important role in our particular you business farmer or manufacturer anybody you can be something worth selling to the public your methods history and high quality standards are all part of your brand image something you should so share so blockchain plays a very important consumers. role in specifying a branding image also retailers trust you how can you guarantee that and your brand image can only be specified if you the customer have trust in you so this is a very important scenario that leads to be looking to look into the specification that's been rendered immutable Vchain's tool chain gives your creations a digital identity linked by a QR code or NFC chip. Consumers no longer need to wonder if a brand's marketing claims of single origin honey, pesticide free vegetables, organic produce, grain fed beef, or limited edition custom design are all empty words. When the blockchain is able to help a brand differentiate by helping it prove the integrity of its supply chain. So blockchain is doing a lot of work in maintaining integrity of any kind of business and manufacturer. And chain logistics can now communicate with their best practices to consumers by capturing data throughout the chain of custodies with IoT sensors. See, in this day, any, any business say IoT, blockchain, AI are program, playing a very important product, role. Whether it's food, cosmetics, apparel, artwork, or any other product with a story. You can further enhance your engagement with consumers by adding videos, photos, and personalized stories that strengthen your brand's reputation. That we see that is already being done when we purchase content. anything through Amazon. We have a video, we have a particular photographs, we have the customer feedbacks. So this all helps in uh, producing trust. From solo creators to small businesses to Fortune 500 companies. The key is fast integration. It's different from other blockchain platforms in that it has no coding required, standard templates, customized tools. VeChain Toolchain is a complete technology solution which includes the software platform, data storage, mobile apps, IoT chips and sensors, APIs and SDKs. The service is highly scalable and features a pay-as-you-go price model so that the businesses can get familiar with blockchain without paying an arm and a leg. It also comes in three versions for small businesses looking for ultra-fast deployment to major corporations interested in completely customizing the look and feel. Most importantly, since VeChain Toolchain is a decentralized application which runs on the VeChain public blockchain, data is visible throughout the entire supply chain from producers to end users. VeChain is the trusted blockchain of choice for many major enterprises, including partnerships with major risk assessment firms like PricewaterhouseCoopers China, PwC Singapore, when we talk about Deloitte, all companies are utilizing the concept of blockchain in their business. From competition and engage with customers by using VeChain Toolchain. Power up your supply chains in an intelligent and indelible way and help make transparency the new benchmark. So the thing is that we are we need to have transparency in our business by utilizing the concept of blockchain. All the particular vendors and FDPs I have given I usually connect to my participants and audience in a particular manner. So let let's start with a particular rapid fire because I think everybody uh, has listened something about blockchain. Uh, uh, the today's uh, uh, presentation in the last presentation. So let's have a rapid fire. See how the participants are connected to us. So you can write. Write down your uh, in the chat box some answers, and organizers are also seeing who are the participants who are connected to the particular session. So let's have a small rapid fire and with the particular discussions. So uh, can I have some answer? What is the principle on which blockchain technology is based on? Have some answers from the answers. You can chat boxes. What is the principle on which blockchain technology is based on? Anybody? Okay, yes, distributed ledger is there. I think when we talk about, yes, uh, we can talk about and language. It enables the information to be distributed among the users without, without being. Yes, 
that's correct all us are particularly correct because uh, you also and you are not copying that information also yes correct pratiba vinayak sir everybody correct now what do you by blockchain technology can anybody have this answer what do you mean by blockchain technology what are blocks anybody the second one yes correct pratiba ma'am correct it is uh, the the uh, records are called as blocks connected audiences now the next one how does a block in the uh, is recognized in the blockchain approach anybody how the block is recognized in the blockchain approach how you recognize a particular block yes correct i think uh, it's correct hash pointers we normally have hash pointers at a link to the block also they also have a transaction data and a time stamp value correct they have a time stamp value yes and yes that's announced and they have time stamp value connected with the particular hash pointer which is connected to the particular blocks correct next question is it possible to modify the data once it is written to the blocks anybody answer for that no yes it correct it's not possible to do so if any modification is required then the organization has to erase the information from all the other blocks yes it's totally correct you have to erase the information and so it's very important that data must be given extreme care while using the blockchain approach extreme care should be in upon last one uh, what are block identifiers anybody for that the last one what are block identifiers what are block identifiers anybody yes value okay any any more answers for the block identifiers blocks identifiers anybody value okay yes uh, uh, yes uh, in the blockchain blocks can be identified the block and the block height also uh, is audio not clear is my voice not clear suresh sir says yes correct uh, it's uh, dr prashant it's correct it's the height is the uh, is the header hash and the block height uh, which uh, easily specifies how the blockchain can be uh, the block uh, 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 the block can be identified in terms of the block identifiers okay is it fine now is it better now is my voice now not breaking Okay. Yes, your voice is okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. It is properly, properly audible, ma'am. Okay. Let Let's start now. As we have already discussed so many things with uh, with the in the previous FDPs, the blockchain. When we talk about blockchain, is a growing uh, list of the records, and it is linked by using cryptography. And uh, when we started, the, it is a kind of a distributed ledger that can record transaction between two parties efficiently in a verifiable and also a permanent way. We also say that it was invented by a person called Satoshi Nakamoto. But uh, the uh, the uh, when we say the identity of the Satoshi Nakamoto still remains unknown. And uh, when it started, it started with the concept of cryptocurrency. But now blockchain is being utilized in terms of uh, more of a scenario for maintaining trust for various types of business and organizations. And uh, when we start using blockchain technology, there's a uh, term called open source nature, and uh, which has the concept of both public and private blockchains, and there's also a distributed ledger. Uh, in fact, the ledger on which transactions are recorded and shared by several participants in the blockchain, and as such, it is not owned or fully controlled by a single entity. So that's why blockchain technology has a very specific scenario. So when when we talk about any kind of uh, uh, specification in terms of your uh, your public, your private, or your uh, blockchain. in pays a very important role so when what is when we normally think about what is a blockchain technology uh, the any time a transaction takes place between two parties it can be made more efficient by blockchain this is due to the simple fact that there is no need for a third party to be involved in a particular transaction so now we are doing the uh, we are utilizing the cryptography and that of the blockchains allow these transactions to be properly verified and helps ensure the permanency of the records that has cast i think in most of the uh, sessions that have been taken place the real motive behind the blockchain technology and when we talk about public blockchain normally or on the scenario of the bitcoin and the ethereum then we had the private blockchains which have the high R three core and the hybrid blockchains are also becoming very popular which is also referred as a blockchain 
chain now led to the concept of hybrid blockchains which utilizing a uh, playing a very very important role in in a scenario in which a business organizations wants to take the advantages of both public and private blockchains now when we talk about public blockchain this this diagram specifies which we have the per permissionless and anybody can join in and as a node and when we talk about the bitcoin all of the, the scenario in passing about the public blockchain and uh, they have a token associated them that is typically going to incentivize and reward participants in the network so there is a more kind of a scenario in which totally decentralized so public blockchain is a totally decentralized scenario but when we talk about a private blockchain a private blockchain is a call as a permission blockchain and uh, participants uh, need to uh, have a consent to join the networks and transaction private are only available to the ecosystem participants that have been given the permissions to join the network so when we talk about any kind of a hyper ledger technology it is kind of private blockchain and in terms of private blockchain there may or may not be a token involved and it is only mostly specified in those scenarios where the enterprise who want to collaborate and share the data but they don't want this sensitive business data visible Available on a public blockchain. So this is the scenario where uh, the private blockchains are more utilized, where the enterprises are collaborating in the sharing data, but they don't want their sensitive business data to be visible on any type of a public blockchain. Then we have a consortium blockchain. The consortium blockchain is a kind of a separate designation which is coming from a private blockchain. The main difference is that uh, in the consortium blockchains are governed by a group rather than an entity. So the private blockchain are governed by a single entity whereas your consortium blockchain are governed by a group and this is a collaborative model which offers some of the best use cases for the blockchain bringing together a group of friend friend they call as friend enemies that is businesses who work together but also competing each other that's why they are called friend enemies that is uh, they are friends also and they are enemies also because they are working together but they are also competing against each other so consortium blockchain is more of a technology that is being utilized by friend enemies when we normally discuss in a layman language then as i told you dragon chain is also playing a very important role so it is a kind of an, a hybrid blockchain and it uh, occupies a unique place in the ecosystem this means that it combines the privacy benefits of a permissioned and a private blockchain with the security and the transparency benefits of the public blockchain so when we talk about any kind of privacy benefit they are more in terms of a private blockchain chain and security and transparency is more in a public blockchain so both these advantages are, are being specified by using the hybrid blockchain i also refer to be as the dragon chain so this hybrid nature makes the businesses to operate with the transparency they are looking for and without having to sacrifice the security and privacy so both the things are coming into the specification that is the concept of hash power being applied to the public chains and also they are getting the advantage of the private the uh, uh, blockchain structure then there is another uh, the concept called as distributed ledger normally what happens that a blockchain is a database remember but it differs from a traditional database in the information stored on it is uh, um, uh, on it is not centralized in one location instead a record of the ledger is held by all of the participants in the chain that can verify the provenance of all the data that is entered so it can be a database without an administrator when we talk about a centralized ledger we have a, a kind of an administrator but when you talk about a distributed ledger it is more of a database without an administrator that this means that the part of its participants don't have to rely on any single individual or entity for the veracity of the data so that's a concept of which is being utilized by the blockchain of the distributed ledger so they are uh, they are termed to be as one of the application of distributed ledger so when we talk about difference between a distributed ledger and a blockchain so when when we talk about a distributed ledger is a database that is decentralized that is distributed across several computers or node 
and in this technology when we talk about the block structure so blockchain has a chain of blocks whereas a distributed ledger is simply a database that is spread across the different nodes it can it, it may or may not be a chain of the blocks and when we talk about the sequence in terms of distributed ledger you can find or uh, in terms of your blockchain you can find all blocks in a particular sequence whereas in a distributed ledger the sequence is not being specified and when we talk about uh, the real time impl uh, implementations blockchain since is one of the uh, application or it is uh, uh, it is taking the uh, scenario of the distributed ledger so it is uh, utilized in lot of banking scenarios it is utilized for various business applications but still distributed ledger uh, the real time impl uh, implementations are less and when we talk about the token concept blockchain is utilizing the token concept whereas the distributed ledger uh, may or may not utilize or uh, the concept of tokenization but uh, blockchain believes in the concept of tokenization and it is utilizing in in a scenario where it can be utilized in terms of uh, your hybrid blockchains so when uh, it's it's normally uh, people get confused with these terms so these terms are sometimes used synonymously but there are different types of ledgers that are structured differently from blockchains so very blockchain was the first distributed ledger technology that the dlt it is not the only type of dlt we can consider so when we talk about distributed ledgers they do not need proof of work or proof of stake whereas uh, when we talk about bitcoin and ethereum these are some of the scaling options that can be compared to blockchains so the scenario is that uh, uh, a distributed ledger technology is utilized by blockchains but it uh, it uh, varies in terms of number of aspects whether in terms of proof of work whether we come in terms of consensus whether we uh, terms in terms of tokenizations or chains of blocks so uh, we need to distinguish between these two but uh, now the popular technology is blockchain which has uh, uh, got various type of real time implementation scenarios so nowadays as we told uh, that blockchain is utilized when we talk about walmart so they have uh, utilized the blockchain for maintaining trust for any type of scenarios as we have seen in the uh, 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 video also when we talk about digital currency whether we talk about security privacy smart contact contacts and companies like uh, accounting firms and record keeping scenarios all are utilizing blockchain in one or other manner uh then uh, just see the scenario how the businesses are benefiting a lot utilizing the concept of blockchain with everyone on a global level such trade activity is recorded through bookkeeping and information stored in specific databases which are closed and siloed within each partner customer and service provider because of this businesses rely heavily on third party proprietary networks to ensure trust and certainty in their trade transactions trades are often managed by multiple siloed applications that each maintain their own ledger security standards and network protocols resulting in slow inefficient and costly transaction processes before the blockchain we told that we have slow inefficient transactions by fundamentally changing and strengthening of trade finance it sounds great but how does this work so well, blockchain, blockchain is becoming is one of the of pillars of trade finance the centralized database that keeps records of digital transactions rather than having a central administrator like a traditional database blockchain has a network of replicated databases synchronized via the internet and visible to permission entities within the network and because of this unique setup blockchain offers a host of benefits firstly blockchain is secure security is one of the benefits it's a highly secure cryptography that makes its decentralized database amongst the safest in the world this means that hacking attacks are virtually impossible in the blockchain as a hacker would not only need to hack into that specific block but all of the preceding blocks going back the entire history of that blockchain that means a hacker has to block or hack the whole chain of the records this has a significant impact on banks insurers financial institutions and regulators blockchain accelerates and secures trade flows between businesses allowing for greater access to their banks and service providers resulting in secure and less costly transactions secure and less costly blockchain transactions provides for the first time in history the opportunity and the technology to transform and rewire global trade finance by leveraging blockchain technology Trade IX is rewiring 
global trade finance. So we can see that uh, how blockchain is becoming a very, very important scenario of all the business transactions. So now I want to tell you that the key benefits of using blockchain for IoT, the, the, we say that we are using Internet of Things and we have the uh, we have the mobile in our hands and continuously we need to transform the various types of applications. So we need to specify for any type of IoT, blockchain plays a very important role because it helps in blending trust, it helps in reducing cost, and it helps in accelerating the transactions. So when any type of IoT scenario is there, unless and until uh, we say that we have a trust being specified, where we have the cost being lowered and we have the transactions being accelerated, this is done with the help of blockchain. So nowadays, when we talk about any computer science scenarios, we are playing a very important role when, whether, when the IoT and blockchain are combined together, they are creating uh, very, very diverse scenarios. and and one more scenario that is artificial intelligence because when we talk about artificial intelligence or machine learning it helps us to create models and those models uh, are, are utilizing the data which is coming from the iot utilizing the uh, uh, security so when we say that uh, the uh, the optimizations and the model building is done with the help of, of your ai your iot helps in connecting with the users and your blockchain helps in security and privacy of that particular data being spread all across the network so these three scenarios are playing a very important role in terms of a perfect fit structure so it's very important that we need to uh, recognize the tools which are uh, uh, playing a very important role in terms of blockchain technology and there is a demand a high demand of highly skilled blockchain specialists which will uh, uh, re result in uh, uh, creating very effective blockchain for the market scenarios so it's uh, very important that you need to acquire the right skills by utilizing the right tool and blockchain tools not only simplify the process of blockchain development but they also help to strengthen your knowledge of a particular domain so when we start with uh, normally the uh, structure of the blockchain is normally a user requested for a transaction then a block representing the transaction is created then a block is broadcasted to all the nodes of the network then all the nodes of the network validate the block and the transaction ta takes place the block is added into the chain and the transaction gets verified and executed so the third party administrator is being uh, uh, reduced here so we don't require the third party administration so these are the some of the uh, uh, some of the steps that helps in the blockchain workflow so solidity solidity is one of the undoubtedly one of the most popular languages and since it is influenced by c++ python and javascript and so people are more related to this particular platform and solidity supports the uh, oop uh, paradigm and it is very helpful in building smart contracts which is one of the most important applications of blockchain and it also also comes handy when you are creating contracts for voting crowdfunding multi signature wallets and blind auctions so solidity is one of the most uh, utilized and most popular blockchain development tool then get nowadays people are also utilizing the get which is also an ethereum node implementation and but uh, since it is using a go programming language so people uh, need to a little bit learn about that programming language but it is not very much difficult and it is available in three interfaces you have the json rpc server command line and the interactive console and it is development uh, a tool which is utilized in all windows mac and linux uh, scenario and the thing that is uh, um, uh, easier with get is that it simplifies the things by automatically connecting to the ethereum mainnet so once you connect to the uh, get you can get connected to the ethereum mainnet and you start building your blockchain then mist mist is also one of the um, uh, wallet that was developed by ethereum also and uh, you can start using that platform for both windows and mac and linux and it is also utilized in development of smart contracts and uh, the the most important thing that you need to specify for mist is that the mist password the once you need to remember it because you cannot change it it is a one time setup so you have to remember that the mist password when you are working within a ethereum mist wallet. 
wallet then another is the sols that is the solidity compiler is a solidity command line uh, compiler which is written in c++ again since it is written in c++ uh, users uh, scholars get connected with it very easily and uh, uh, the sols can be coded in c++ and also there is sols js and it it has the source code from c++ to javascript so people uh, can use that also and uh, the um, uh, the it has uh, working with offline also so you can work with it you can work with it online also and it is also one of the free tool that is being available but remember these tools have some free version still a particular uh, a period of time and then when you have uh, well versed with it with 14 days 20 days trial versions or with a certain limit then you need to purchase them in order to uh, uh, build more specific professional projects management then there is also remix ide it is also used for blockchain development it is a browser based blockchain tool used for creation and development of smart contracts and it can be used for writing testing debugging and de uh, deploying your smart contracts and uh, the remix website you can uh, you normally get this particular screen where you can uh, start uh, analyzing or building your blockchains and uh, it is easy and uh, efficiently uh, uh, way of compiling and working in by using the this particular particular scenario then also we have the meta mask meta mask is again a wallet designed to function uh, excuse me uh, ma'am can i interrupt you ma'am yes ma'am uh, ma'am can you a uh, little bit slow please okay ma'am okay okay thank you ma'am okay again we have a meta mask wallet the meta mask wallet is designed to function as a bridge between the ethereum blockchain and it acts as a browser extension so the advantage by using meta mask is can uh, that it can be linked with shapes of uh, uh, the shape shift and the coinbase to sell and buy the ethereum and erc token so more of a tokenization work and more of a blockchain app development is also done with the help of meta mask so once the uh, you have installed this meta mask in your browser uh, you have a built in ethereum wallet that uh, it is easy to use uh, and it is also very uh, uh, specific when people uh, have a, a, a working scenario with 10 days and 15 days they work with meta mask then they have an efficient flow and efficient scenario working in this particular platform then we have truffle uh, again this is also an ethereum blockchain framework uh, which is was designed to and uh, to create a development environment for uh, developing various types of ethereum based apps and the thing is that it has a vast library that provides custom deployment for writing again for smart contracts and it is also used for linking compiling and deployment and it is also one of the one of the uh, tool that is uh, quite efficiently used by various type of organizations for development of smart contracts then we have the ganache ganache is also one of the blockchain tool that helps you to create your private ethereum blockchain to test uh, various apps and you have to execute the commands you can inspect the state while taking full uh, operation control of the blockchain uh, the important thing with blockchain developers while using ganache is that they test their smart contracts during the development since it comes with many convenient options like advanced mining controls and built in explorer so you have the testing option also being uh, provided using the ganache platform then we have the blockchain test net this is also uh, one of the uh, uh, environment uh, that helps in uh, to test the various types of apps before making them live so each blockchain solution has its un unique test net and it is highly recommended that you use the respective test net for the optimal result and uh, uh, the uh, the test nets are extremely useful for uh, uh, specifying various types of bugs or various types of errors uh, because you test those Uh, blockchains you test those apps before bringing into the market so it is a, a kind of an online scenario that helps you to test the uh, particular types of uh, blockchains when you are developing and you are uh, uh, rather than bringing them online you can have a test on them you can run them you can link them and then go on live uh, in terms of the user connectivity 
then nowadays blockchain is also utilized as a service and uh, when we have the various types of scenarios in which various companies like microsoft azure we have the amazon aws amplify and sap they all are utilizing and they all are providing blockchain as a uh, service so it can be a convenient tool for individual entrepreneurs and the companies who wish to use the blockchain but don't have the uh, like the skills or operational overhead they don't want to take so they can use is as a service when we had a cloud as a service we also have the blockchain as a service which can be utilized for development of efficient and uh, easy going blockchains which have security being specified in every aspect of uh, uh, utilization so these were the some of the most important uh, tools that can be utilized for the development of various types of blockchains so let's see one of the scenario you know, that how blockchain is also is plays a very counted? important role in terms of voting also line. how do you know that who they say they are when you buy coffee that's labeled fair trade what makes you so certain of its origin to be sure really sure about any of those questions you need a system where records can be stored facts can be verified by anyone and security verification is a most one of the most important scenario records. that is everyone being provided by blockchain systems like this are on the horizon and the software that powers them is called a blockchain blockchains store information across a network of personal computers making them not just decentralized but distributed this means no central company or person owns the system yet everyone can use it and help run it this is important because it means it's difficult for any one person to take down the network or corrupt it the people who run the system use their computer to hold bundles of records submitted by others known as blocks in a chronological chain the blockchain uses a form of math called cryptography to ensure that records can't be counterfeited or changed by anyone else You've probably heard of the blockchain's first killer app, a form of digital cash called Bitcoin that you can send to anyone, even a complete stranger. Bitcoin is different from credit cards, PayPal, or other ways to send money because there isn't a bank or financial middleman involved. Instead, people from all over the world help move the digital money by validating others' Bitcoin transactions with their personal computers, earning a small fee in the process. Bitcoin uses the blockchain by tracking records of ownership over this digital cash so only one person can be the owner at a time and the cash can't be spent twice like counterfeit money in the physical world can. But Bitcoin is just the beginning for blockchains. In the future, blockchains that manage and verify online data could enable us to launch companies that are entirely run by algorithms, making self-driving cars safer, help us protect our so online algorithms and those algorithms will be the AI algorithms that will play a very important role in blockchain development. Forever, and it's all just the beginning. To learn more about the urgent so as i told you that uh, utilizing the particular tools of the blockchain we have uh, we can have a perfect fit in which we have the iot and ml and uh, the the thing is that these three technologies when converge and create new business models because when we talk about the sensors when we talk about the cards when we talk about the machines and various types of iot devices they have the digital leveraging iot uh, they that uh, autonomously send and receive money through the blockchain technology that can autonomously make decision as independent economic agents leveraging ai and data analytics so once we have the data analytics also being done in the particular iot scenario and we have a perfect fit in which all these three particular scenarios whether it's ai whether it's ml whether it's iot play a very important role because they will help in building business model and digital transformation of the various companies so when you talk about blockchain blockchain what will it will do it will increase the trust the transparency the security and the privacy of the business processes by providing a shared and decentralized distributed ledger and when we talk about iot nowadays iot is drive the automation of industries uh, whether it's the business processes and whether it's any kind of a smart home technology we talk about smart cars we talk about so every 
thing is now being managed by iot and ai what will ai do ai will improve the processes by detecting patterns and optimizing the outcomes of these processes so once you have good pattern detection once you have good uh, optimization detection done with the help of ai then this will help in developing of more efficient iot scenarios which are very efficiently secured and privacy is maintained by using the blockchain concept so these three scenarios when we talk about blockchain iot and ai will be one of the uh, significant uh, uh, specification in terms of the coming uh, uh, scenarios where we'll be having the autonomous cars and where we'll be having the concept of uh, fully automated smart homes and many other business applications so these are the scenarios when we say we have the connect we have the connect with the internet of things we have the trust with the blockchain and we have lot of patterns and insights being specified by ai so ai is giving you uh, insights where you are connecting in a better manner with the particular devices and nowadays we don't have iot we have internet of everything so now when we talk about internet of everything then our ai will play a all a huge role and then we have a block chain which will pave a mannerism in which uh, the trust will be established by the business specification in terms of user acceptance and so on so when when we talk about any kind of pharmaceutical industries when we talk about any kind of healthcare providers we have all three things in the scenarios where we have the iot also being specified we have the clinical trials being done using the ai algorithms and we have the uh, transactions taking place with the help of your blockchain uh, uh, scenarios so everything when we talk about ai when we talk about machine learning when we talk about your um, uh, um, the blockchain concepts so all these th uh, three scenarios are utilized in most of the industries for producing better results so the uh, the thing is that the convergence of these technologies can be a particular beneficial for data management identity management and automation uh, of the business processes so when we talk about any kind of a voting scenario where identity management plays a very important role when we talk about the trust where your uh, business transactions uh, play a very important role so all these three technologies will converge in a huge uh, and a uh, business uh, Uh, scenarios where user will able to adapt all these three in terms of their connectivity in terms of their privacy and also in terms of their uh, prediction power that is a predictive analysis which is done very efficiently by the machine learning algorithms so when we talk about your digitization of your industries this digitization is being done by using your artificial intelligence where artificial intelligence helps in the optimization of the data your iot actual is the a platform where data huge data is being generated by your smart apps by your smart uh, uh, your homes by your smart mobiles and so on and the blockchain will specify the infrastructure and the various rules of engagement which will help in the trust management so all these three particular scenario will help in the digitization of most of your industry specification so when we talk about your blockchain uh, technology the blockchain technology uh, is uh, uh, can uh, play a very important role in the standardization of the data that is being coming from huge number of iot devices uh, all across the globe so you have your um, uh, homes being optimized by iot you have your cars being optimized by iot but this data is useless data unless and until it is being optimized and its uh, predictive analysis being being done by using ai and ml platforms so we can i can specify that currently in this particular pandemic also uh, the uh, machine learning and ai are playing a very important role and india around 12 to 13 startups have been built by utilizing both iot framework by utilizing both your ml and also they are utilizing the hash algorithms the blockchain concept in order to maintain the trust so that the data is also 
not being uh, uh, being specified or being leveraged or being uh, spread all across the uh, globe so the thing is that all these three things are playing a very important role in any kind of your digitization your healthcare industries and all other uh, scenarios also there is a also a visualization tool that is helping this in this platform which is called as a tableau currently this uh, this tool is also playing a huge important role it is developing a covid 19 tracer so all these visualization when we talk about visualization when we talk about your tokenization through the blockchain concept these uh, these uh, specifications are leveraging a great part in any type of industry digitization and also in terms of uh, uh, the standardization of your data so when we talk about your data privacy and data security the blockchain when we talk about in terms of bitcoins or ethereum uh, they hold a high state of degree and as already told you when we have utilizing the concept of dragon chains in which we have the hybrid blockchains being developed so you, you are utilizing the concept of both privacy and security that is being provided by public and private blockchains also when we talk about blockchains it also adds the value because as i told you that um, uh, this particular value is being specified by the trust being secured by the user and uh, when uh, these uh, transactions are being uh, playing and then transactions are happening uh, the thing is that ai can be helpful and increase the security by detecting the illicit activities so when when we talk about ai uh, the uh, ai plays a very important role in any type of uh, uh, your uh, 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 predictive analysis so if if there can be any type of illicit activities that can be or that can occur in a blockchain so this information can be provided by uh, uh, efficient algorithms of ai which help in predictive analysis also when we talk about scalability uh, the current limitation of iot management is the uh, huge amount of data as i told you there is huge amount of data being collected but um, uh, it's it's very important that uh, an alternative consensus mechanism such as proof of stake or proof of authority uh, need to be specified so that we have more energy efficient scalable solutions in terms of iot so here again your ai will be helping in terms of predictive analysis and and it can specify a uh, lot of uh, uh, analytics in terms of uh, uh, which will be in the more energy efficient solutions which will help in the scalability of the particular iot network as well as your blockchain network then also uh, the other scenarios in which blockchain is uh, being specified where your iot and ai all will play a, a, a important role is authentication so so blockchain based aren't these will make sure that the transaction parties will receive a digital identity which is based on their actual that is your real physical individuals or individual identity and uh, it's it's very important uh, when we are talking about any type of car sharing or when we talk about your um, digitization of transportations and so on in those scenarios the authentication uh, plays a very important role and that authentication will be provided by the concept of your block chain the connectivity will be done by iot and the predictive analysis will be done by using the ai mechanism then uh, uh, in terms of iot uh, we have already been specified that in about 2025 there will be 20 billion devices that will be connected to the particular network where users will be connected so in that particular scenario blockchain will be a perfect fit to provide a system for installing and managing those digital identity in a more secure and efficient manner because it's very important to be specified in terms of an iot scenario that which device is trusted or which device is not trusted because you will be having huge number of devices that will be connected in terms of iot scenarios and this efficient iot analytics will be done by your machine learning and your deep learning algorithms so uh, when we talk about this perfect fit uh, so this perfect fit is coming from the concept of your privacy your security your authentication your scalability so this is a scenario which is help in leveraging the concept of perfect fit also we have the smart contracts as i told you so smart contracts have tremendous potential to yield efficiency in various sectors and but still they are not being uh, adopted in the industries so uh, these uh, adoption and these uh, uh, 
working of these smart contracts in terms of their uh, more trusting network will be done both by your artificial intelligence algorithms and both by your uh, uh, blockchain and both by our iot network which will uh, help uh, people to have trust on it so once you have the trust on a particular um, uh, uh, your uh, scenario or businesses then the optimization of the smart contracts will also be easily done so this need to be specified that this perfect fit is coming again with the scenario of automation with the help of your ai ml and your blockchain nowadays uh, when we talk about blockchain euro this is also one of the way that how the smart pro, uh, smart contracts can unfold their full potential so this was only a blockchain based digital euro which enables the euro dominated smart contracts such as the iot devices can directly offer services on their pay per use so uh, there's a, there's a very important concept that how much you uh, use you have to pay for that only so there is a there, there is being specified this uh, information or this uh, uh, usage is being specified by the blockchain euro and uh, this is a fully automated devices making decisions on their own and uh, uh, they have the uh, ai and uh, the concept where financial transactions will be uh, easily being done with the help of their device level so when we talk about this blockchain euro uh, there's a there's a digital blockchain based currency where micro payments for iot devices could be conducted easily and cost effectively so with the startups like cash on ledger and monerium they have already started developing such currencies in 2019 although they are not uh, at all popular in india uh, till this particular specification but uh, in europe and other uh, uh, countries they have been utilizing these currencies in a very very effective manner then uh, other uh, trusted uh, specification of a currency is the cbdc's currencies these cbdc currencies are more being utilized because they are the currencies which will be coming from the directly from the central bank digital currency so people will have more trust on these currencies because they will not be owned by a particular entity or organization but they will be owned by the central government itself so uh, uh, so when we talk about a euro chain your euro chain will be more kind of a scenario where a private organization is owing them but when we have the cbdc framework it will be a central bank digital currency so people will have more trust on these type of currencies so uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the uh, uh, concept of e money so this uh, e money counts as a commercial bank money while money provided by the central bank is a central bank money so when we have the euro currency or when we had the concept of uh, 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 the uh, uh, euro uh, currency it was kind of a private owned organizations whereas when we talk about the cbdc's digital currencies they are uh, more of uh, uh, being trusted because in terms of any financial turmoil or when banks and e money institutions there is a bankruptcy so people have more connected to the central bank currencies as compared to the euro currency but they both have been started utilizations not in um, uh, current india scenario but in many countries they these currencies are uh, being utilized by the concept of blockchain then another specification that blockchain is being utilized in terms of iot scenario also that is your uh, monetization of iot devices by tokenization process so this tokenization supports the authentication of the network participants and facilitating the automation of business processes so uh, the blockchain te uh, technology uh, enables the dematerialization of your assets so your um, uh, token is being provided to the asset it can be any asset for example, example there is a lamp and uh, this lamp is an autonomous ent entity is operating on its own so uh, by using the smart contracts the direct payments are made uh, uh, for for the lamp are being possible if uh, if a respective payment is received the lamp will uh, will be on if the particular respective payment is not being received the lamp will not be on so it is again use the concept of pay per use so various type of iot devices are using the concept of tokenization with the help of block 
blockchain where you can use the concept of pay per use which will help again in the faster and scalable transactions so when we talk about it, the tokenization is not only beneficial in case of lamps but various type of iot devices when you have the sensors you have your cards you have the machines or you have the cameras uh, when when these devices are being utilized so they are more in terms of your uh, the utilization of the device as per you pay and as per the usage of that device is being specified so this is uh, again one of the most uh, uh, efficient uh, uh, application of the blockchain according along with the iot specification in it so it's very important to see how industries um, uh, uh, blockchain uh, specification is transforming in india so in india when we talk about indian perspe perspective whether we have the banking we have the finance and whether we have the healthcare we have the logistic blockchain has found its way into the indian fintech system so the financial tech ecosystem is being specified by the blockchain utilization and when we started we, uh, with the with the banks so the bank banks are using this technology through the kyc procedures offered by this technology sbi leads are the first bank to use this kyc and facilitate uh, the, the again nowadays when you talk about access bank the hdfc the icicic they all are utilizing the kyc finance procedures and the uh, the um, uh, the uh, 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 when we talk about your validation of the land records or when we talk about your inventory audits all being done by efficient use of the uh, blockchain technologies so again again when we talk about indian scenarios in, in this indian scenarios the companies like icic prudential the sbi life insurance the hdfc all are utilizing the blockchain concept for even the claim management the claim management uh, uh, is also being done efficiently by utilizing the concept of blockchain then we have tcs now tcs microsoft all have utilized the blockchain for uh, Um, your digital identity and uh, identification your asset monetization your tokenization so in in these scenarios uh, as we say that india although was not uh, too keen to adopt to the uh, currency based scenarios the bitcoin scenarios or the euro currency based scenarios the indian uh, scenarios have adopted blockchain in terms of bank kyc in terms of tokenization in terms of uh, your uh, record keeping scenario in a efficient manner by using the blockchain concepts also to, uh, to uh, curb various types of education uh, 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 flaws and education issues uh, in terms of your fraudulent degrees and certification this also has been taken by the blockchain technologies where it is uh, uh, utilizing that concept for curb the fair, uh, various uh, uh, degree frauds and various uh, certification uh, frauds that were happening also uh, uh, when we talk about your pharmaceutical and industry or your healthcare industry they all are utilizing this blockchain concept in order to uh, do more faster and more efficient transactions uh also uh, uh, in terms of india real estate industries where you have were uh, very much reliable on the brokers and your registrations and there were a lot of ownership frauds so this is also uh, being reduced by the utilization of your blockchain concepts in the real time industries where you have you are digitizing the land titles and uh, you have a digital address associated and stored on the blockchain and which has the information of all your occupancy your ownership records your your financial specifications your property related your legal disputes and so on so there's one click and in, on the block everything will be specified for that particular land so this is also one of the most efficient scenario in which blockchain is being transforming in indian perspective also when we talk about your smart contracts being specified so your dependency of the middleman is being reduced and in indian perspective in the real estate industry where there were huge Huge amount of frauds on the particular land that is being purchased. This blockchain technology is playing a very important role. Now, as we say that AI, ML, blockchain, and IoT are the future. Not, as we say, not the future, but they are the current scenarios which are playing a very important role in any type of transactions and businesses. Cars like Tesla's interpret and analyze their surroundings to intelligently drive themselves. Amazon monitors our browsing habits and intelligently serves us up products it thinks we'd like to buy. 
even Google decides what kind of search results to give us based on who it thinks we are. Artificially intelligent algorithms are here, but this is only the beginning. Because in the future, AI is going to change everything. But do we want it to? Well, what exactly is artificial intelligence? Maybe a better question might be, what exactly is intelligence? The simplest descriptor is collecting data about the world and using that data to make predictions in the short and long term. That applies to both people and machines. So when we talk about AI in our lives, we're talking about everything from a computer being able to read a handwritten document like an OCR reader to a robot performing complex surgery on its own even to a massive database, categorizing your personality based on what you've written and looked at online. Because the world of AI is so incredibly large, let's take a look at some of the most groundbreaking developments we expect to see in the very near future, and whether that's a step forward or backward for society. First and foremost, AI systems are already primed to take over thousands, if not millions of jobs. Any job that consists of a human taking down information from other humans and inputting it into a system is likely to go obsolete. So cashiers, receptionists, telemarketers, and bank tellers are all on their way out. As self-driving cars, self-operating drones, and other conveyors from A to B get more complex, we'll also lose jobs like truck drivers, postal workers, courier services, even pizza delivery. Factories are also becoming fully automated. So are car washes and movie theaters. Even my job as a journalist is threatened by rapidly improving news algorithms that can gather information and deliver it faster and more accurately. But as society changes to accommodate an all-machine service world, it'll also open up new jobs for the next generation. Writing software, repairing and maintaining robots, and developing new and better systems. Most notably, machines are also primed to take over dangerous jobs. Firefighting, mining, deep-sea oil drilling, construction, and other careers with high mortality rates will be replaced by machines that can't get sick or hurt. We don't know what an all-AI workforce will look like yet, but many economists believe that the world might be a brighter and more rewarding place with machines taking over the more dull and hazardous jobs. But in my perspective, it's very important that when the machine is controlled by human, then your uh, uh, research analysis and then your work will be more better rather than human controlled by a machine. Based on patterns in that data are poised to change every avenue of society. Starting from something small, like optimizing traffic patterns over time to figure out the best routes to take or how to fix roads and rebuild highways all the way to something much more serious, like monitoring epidemics and disease and stopping them before they spread. Machine learning has even shown to analyze human behavior and predict warning signs by recognizing common language used by people like sexual predators or terrorists and alerting law enforcement to take action. Then again, that same technology can be used to track down political dissidents or serve fake news to vulnerable people while blocking out competing opinions and information. Just a few tech monopolies control the latest breakthroughs in data collecting, processing, and analyzing. And while we may hope that AI will help advance our society, it may just end up working to benefit the tech industry and only those who can afford to take advantage of cheaper, smarter human replacements. Maybe to the detriment of society. But for now, we just don't know what the future of AI holds. So it's very important that we need to specify how the uh, machine is controlled by human rather than how the uh, humans are controlled by machines. So I'll be I'll be forwarding all these references. These are very important references in which you have the concept where you can go on for your uh, Ethereum development blockchains or you can go off with the Solidity framework analysis and blockchain development. And it's very important to first to work on a particular tool, uh, get the GitHub code which is available in the GitHub libraries uh, just just to try to run that the code which is available it's very important for us to run the same code then play with it normally as researchers as, as learners what we do we try to build something new but rather than going for building something new it's very important that we should first get the code that is available in nowadays um, in every type of github libraries and various type of uh, uh, samples that are being available try to run that code and then you need to specify that how you can play with it, how you can make minute changes and how you can work efficiently with those particular coding scenarios. 
at from Jamia Hamdar, we are specifying that although we are working in this pandemic situation, but uh, we have to adapt by using various technical scenarios and help the society in whatever manner we can. These are all my connectivity. You can connect to me, with, with me through this particular mail IDs and we, uh, well, uh, we can have uh, any type of discussions uh, you can have with me. So it's very important that in particular scenarios, we'll develop uh, 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 contacts, we develop a, a situation in which a lot of collaborative learning can also take place. So thank you all. Thank you for, for listening to me and uh, let's have some discussions with everybody. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for a very informative video, uh, that lecture. Uh, it's a consolidation uh, sorry, of... Sorry, ma'am. Uh, Raki, ma'am, actually, my flow is a little fast. <laughs> this is the... Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry for but, interruption. Uh, yes, yeah, no, no. Uh, like, actually, um, when I uh, this is when I take my class or when I uh, take my sessions also, I, I go into the uh, depth of those sessions and then I uh, my flow becomes faster. So sorry for that. Uh, so, uh, ma'am, no, it is very, really very informative. It's very excellent session. And it's uh, not only for blockchain, it's really the consolidation of several new technologies. Uh, it's uh, covering uh, the various aspects of uh, the now technologies. So how the blockchains are uh, like uh, uh, utilizable in uh, various aspects with the MI also with the, uh, so it's uh, really, I'm really thankful to you that uh, it's a really nice nice session so. ma'am the thing i just wanted to add like uh, currently what happens that uh, my researcher students also whether the phd or the uh, uh, the mtech students they normally say no we'll be working on blockchain so uh, that's fine but unless and until if you want to develop a a, a, a good project or when you want to uh, uh, get, uh, build a startup uh, so in that scenarios you cannot say that you'll be working only on blockchain you have to work on diverse aspects whether it's AI, ML, whether it's your IoT. So these all technologies are connected uh, in a very, very important manner to each other. Correct, ma'am. I agree with you that all the technology are somehow related to one another. We cannot be, uh, go with only one technology because each one technology depends on one another, actually. So we should have the idea of each and every technology. Yes, ma'am. And we should know the collaborativeness of uh, all these technologies also. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, if anyone have like a, a query, then please ask to ma'am. Yes. You, uh, the participant can uh, create the queries, please. The main challenges, sir, um, uh, as I told you, the main challenges uh, in terms of blockchain uh, is are the um, uh, utilization. I think the most important thing is because firstly, you need to identify whether you are going for a public or you are going for a private or you are going for a hybrid blockchain. And uh, the another important uh, challenge that is coming into the picture currently is uh, in Indian perspective, uh, we are not going towards the uh, concept of bitcoins or so on. In terms of Indian perspective, we are normally utilizing block blockchains for um, uh, various types of, uh, as I told you, in terms of um, um, the uh, uh, the um, 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 pharmaceutical industries or in terms of uh, uh, your uh, other industries where uh, uh, trusting is playing a very important role. So the thing is that how efficiently an organization uh, adapts to these particular uh, uh, issues are very important because the thing is that uh, uh, when we talk about your organization, when we talk about your culture, your cost, efficiency, regulation, governance. Uh, these are all the th things that come with blockchain. And uh, nowadays, as I told you, companies, rather than going for fully adopting the uh, blockchain, uh, they are utilizing the blockchain in terms of as a service. So because uh, the issue is that uh, th there's a lot of uh, energy, excessive energy or your complexity of the networks. And um, uh, then uh, still there are issues with the scalability and uh, blockchain channel challenges are also that uh, uh, we have the issues that, uh, as I told you, that uh, um, uh, they are uh, not uh, 
uh, indestructible so these these are things that are being related as in terms of the blockchain uh, scenario uh, when we talk about we cannot change the block then it is one of the advantage in terms of um, uh, no changing or no uh, changes being done but if uh, uh, for example uh, some uh, some uh, by mistake some changes being done so then then it becomes again an issue so as i told you there is very important that uh, first uh, you should have a little bit knowledge and then you start development because then it will be helpful in terms of uh, various types of challenges that occur and the thing is that we should adapt blockchain uh, it's better that we go for simple simple blockchains developments rather than going for a whole big solutions so in terms of that as i told you uh, we can go with co uh, uh, combination combinative projects in terms of ai iot and blockchain where your hash functions uh, utilizing blockchains can also be developed so that the concept when they when we talking about excessive energy or when we talk about complex networks this also can be reduced hello yes sir yes sir uh, ma'am i have a question uh, regarding uh, blockchain as a services you have nowadays aws and microsoft are providing yes sir and uh, uh, and you said that uh, we cannot use uh, blockchain as service for uh, in financial finance uh or in or in uh, supply chain management can we use blockchain as a service in all domain sir i am still not able to get you we can use that sir we can use blockchain as a service in finance also but the thing okay. is that the most important thing is the trust uh, so okay. it's it's very important that uh, uh, when we go for organization like aws as i told you they are offering that as, uh, as a service so uh, these organization uh, i strongly believe you believe that uh, they will not put uh, their stakeholders at risk uh, and deliver incorrect deliverables so uh, you can trust those for finance uh, also but the thing is that sir i i i i personally believe it that rather than going directly with finance we can go with digital identities so firstly if uh, we say that we can go with digital identity in terms of voting systems and other scenarios uh, mm -hmm. then you are using this service and then how it can be very much helpful then we can go with the finance aspects okay Uh, suppose my, my requirement is i want to develop uh, a system a blockchain system for supply chain management so yes sir that is very efficiently can be done okay smart contract will be used there or not sir so Uh, so uh, 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 when when you talk about supply chain management obviously smart contact will play an important role but tokenization as i told you tokenization is also one of the aspect that is used if you have some um, uh, in the supply chain management you have some iot devices also there so then okay. uh, your tokenization also can be very much effective okay fine ma'am thank you thank you sir uh then we have um, something related to Ank ankur sir says uh, okay chandra uh, shekar kosri says that uh, current currency replaced by bitcoin uh, it it for indian perspective abhi uh, this this will take time uh, chandra sir because uh, uh, this totally is uh, uh, on the regulations uh, of a particular country so uh, abhi india ke perspective mein this will take time because i think it will be much more advisable if we go with the central bank cbdc currency scenario because then Uh, as i told you in terms of any kind of a frauds or in terms of any kind of bankruptcy our money will be better handled because when we talk about the central bank currency scenarios but uh, in indian perspective it will take time because uh, currently the regulations still not go with the adoption of a particular currency but many uh, countries have already started this but in my current scenarios in my perspective i think cbdc currency is much more uh, better to be utilized in terms of the euro currency See. Okay, then we have Ankur sir. What does Ankur says? Says prospects of blockchain education. Yes, uh, this is very important, Ankur sir. Uh, this this particular scenario, as I told you, in the current uh, uh, we had the uh, fraudulent degree scams and we had the for various types of issues related to various educational uh, sector. So in that scenarios, that uh, the uh, blockchain will be very much efficiently being utilized because it will be helpful in specifying the digital identity. And this is already being started because nowadays your degrees are totally being uh, being judged. 
judged and totally being uh, uh, specified by the organizations in terms of some uh, uh, specific uh, uh, the, there, there are some marks and there are some uh, uh, even there there are some uh, uh, digitization so when you take your degree the te test uh, uh, I, i can say when we go for in uh, you uh, saudi arabia i can tell you that uh, when we go in saudi arabia and other type of countries and when we when we go for the jobs uh, the degrees are totally scrutinized and they are totally being checked in terms of their um, uh, uh, you uh, whether they are not fraud or whether there are some issues so there's a uh, there's a mark put at the behind the degree which says that it is correctly verified so in that scenario that the work has already been started so your degrees are totally being checked in terms uh, not only uh, by your marks but by special uh, 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 special hash chains or in terms of special uh, digitization that is being uh, uh, done on the degrees uh yes uh not uh, not only attestation ma'am it says verify verify verification uh because i also once uh, wanted to go to uh, saudi arabia and then your degrees were totally verified and totally uh, being uh, scrutinized so this in terms uh, will will be a very helpful and very faster work yes yes ma'am for oman also yes in central bank currency scenario there will be no centralized authority to manage the activities i think the centralized in the cbdc sir scenario madhukar sir uh, the the important concept there will be the trust in the government that that's that's that we will play a very important role because the central bank comes uh, as a whole sole responsibility of the government okay so the, the, that will be a total trust on the government and sir if we say in the current scenario we we are trusting the government and putting our money in the banks also so for the cbdc currencies the trust in the government and the central bank will play a very important role then it is decentralized distributed ledger not owned by single but if any miss is to happen will control and responsible yes uh, in terms of cbdc i i'll tell you that uh, uh, it will be more uh, it will be a more scenario in which you can at least uh, uh, connect to the government you can connect to the central bank in terms of any financial losses or in terms of any currency issues but for a private organization and trusting those euro currency scenario will be a uh, will be a, uh, will be an issue so in terms of uh, the uh, 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 currency scenario i think cbdc will be more uh, adaptable in an indian perspective um obviously sir i think the in the in the uh, uh, sooner or later it will be adapted in terms of voting process also and it will be uh, we can easily do an online voting scenario because if blockchain totally utilize in terms of uh, your uh, voting scenarios then uh, those evms can all be replaced by online votings only because your identity or identity management your trust management will all be done by the blocks and all being done by the blockchain technology so it will be much faster much more faster and more because nowadays we still think that there are evm hackings or some issues related with the evm also so if this digitization will play a very effective role in a country like india where where i think every month or every uh, second month we have elections so this will be very much helpful well thank you ma'am uh, it's very nice informative session uh, i hope all the query clear uh, if I, i'm also has... a learner at every aspect so i try to uh, 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 like solve the queries because i'm also a learner at every aspect so thank you all yes, thank you participants yes ma'am i agree each and every person is a learner throughout the life and if it if the person is a good learner then on that only the uh, success will come then only the growth will become and ma'am the thing is that in the four and six months of this pandemic and this lockdown i have utilized my full time in learning new because when when i started i started using the wireless networks when i was doing my my phd but in this six and seven months i have gone lot of working with ai iot with the blockchain concept and uh, these are the things which will i think uh, uh, play a very important role because i think the, as w which also says that this pandemic will last so when we take say that it will last so then we have the technology to stop it not just by uh, staying at home 
Yes, ma'am. Great, ma'am. Actually, uh, we we also take this pandemic situation to be the opportunity to get some new, and uh, we uh, also uh, we the uh, Purnima also organizing several FTPs so that uh, the more and more people can get uh, more and more knowledge related to the new technology so that the, this particular time can be properly utilized and the beneficial for each and every person so that uh, uh, the, after this pandemic uh, whenever uh, whether the everything is okay the this particular time will be very like uh, it will not think like that uh, this time is waste it is more like a, it's a better utilization of the time and it's a great uh, honor to have your uh, nice lecture and uh, now uh, knowledge sharing session thank you ma'am thank and, you uh, thanks all the participants to make the queries and uh, uh, listen to uh, the great session uh, thank you ma'am uh, can i leave ma'am i have a class at 4 o'clock yes yes of course ma'am yes ma'am thank you thank, thank you for uh, thanks a lot ma'am thanks a lot ma'am and thank you all the participants uh, thanks for uh, sharing the time and uh, this is the uh, i will share all the study materials on the link of uh, all the sessions uh, at the evening by the evening and uh, i have already shared on your whatsapp group also and uh, thanks thanks all of you and uh, tomorrow the session will be start from 10 o'clock okay and i'll share all the detail on your whatsapp group as, as well as i will send the mail also regarding to these sessions thank you all thank you all participants please